Hello YouTube, it's me John Avenger once again and welcome back to Holiday Fest. And do I have a treat for you guys. This is the 2000 remake, live action remake of one of the most beloved Dr. Seuss stories I've ever made. This time I'm reviewing it inside so you'll hear every word coming out of my mouth. Because when I reviewed the original, it was windy out. So, it's Dr. Seuss's live action How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Yeah. With Jim Carrey, who steals the show as the mean green machine, the Grinch. Now, I saw this movie on VHS when I was a when I was a uh, not when I was a kid when I was a teenager, and I thought that for a live action version that was longer than the original, that's one plus that it has over the original that is that is longer, so they have more story to give you, and. Uh, I think it works. It has a really good director behind it, Ron Howard, who knows how to get really good shots. He has a sense of fun to his movies, especially the you know the the uh, movies he made in the '80s and the '90s. You know he did, he's done more serious stuff in recent years with uh, Tom Hanks and with uh, uh, with Chris Hemsworth. I think he did Rush in a couple years ago. But yeah, but he's a good director. He directs the hell out of this cast. It's got a hell of a cast. You got. Jim Carrey is the Grinch. His performance is fan freaking tastic. He has to act through this Oscar winning makeup, which is absolutely wonderful. I mean, this is some of the best makeup I've seen in a non Marvel or you know Star Wars movie or anything like that. Really good makeup effects on on the Grinch. You know, all the prosthetics and the green and the yellow contacts and everything it looks fantastic. The world of Doctor Seuss looks great on on live action. You know, the city of Fouville. It's very colorful, and they have these beautiful lights and big, you know, handmade practical effects sets that don't look like crap. There's some CGI, but the the real the practical sets and the costumes and the and the makeup is really well done. For the supporting cast, you have uh, Christina Baranski. She's um, uh, uh, Mary Lou Who. She's uh, an older version, the older Mary Lou Who. Who falls for the Grinch at the end of the film? You got Molly Shannon from SNL. She plays um, Lou's Lou's wife, and uh, you have also you have uh, Jeffrey Tambor as the mayor of Whoville. He just got a Golden Globe nomination. He's a really good actor. I've always respected Jeffrey Tambor. And you got Taylor Momsen as Cindy Lou, who is one of the cutest things I've ever seen on screen. It's a shame now she's some goth emo chick in a band. I mean, I'm glad she's still doing stuff, but, you know, she looked like my cousin, like one of my cousins, my female cousins. There's the insert of the Grinch. I really enjoyed this movie. I know a lot of people give a shit saying, oh, the original's better. The Grinch looks like a gremlin. It's a shitty rendition. It's just too, it's padded out. I think the hour and 45 minutes works here. You get to see a lot more of Whoville. You get to know more about the Whovilles. Yeah, there's some stupid crude humor. There's some butt jokes here and there. And there's a joke where the Grinch yeah, is getting pulled back. And then he shoots right into Mary. Uh, uh, is it? No, no Martha Mayhew. That, as I said, Mary. Uh, what am I thinking? Martha Mayhew. He, he falls right into her breast. They don't show her breast. So it's still a kid's movie, though. It still keeps some of the family, uh, you know, renditions of the original story without being too crude where you're like okay yeah this is not for, this is not like the cat in the hat that movie is god awful this movie at least has a sense of fun and wonder and jim carries over the top but he's great in it he has most of the dialogue from the original short he is just freaking acting over this makeup he's big and he's theatrical and he works as the grinch I mean, he plays a lot of characters that are green. He was the Grinch in the year 2000. He was the Riddler in 1995's Batman Forever. And he was the Mask. So I guess Jim Carrey and Green go well because they make green at the box office. But, uh, yeah, Taylor Momsen is, uh, is Cindy Lou. She's a very cute girl, little girl that wants to invite the Grinch to celebrate Christmas with the Who's. And, uh, you know, you know, basically know the story. It's basically the same as the original but they added more. They gave the Grinch a backstory. It wasn't bullshit like Halloween, the original Halloween. I mean, the remake of Halloween that Rob Zombie did, not the original, where they gave Michael Myers a backstory, which didn't work. Here, it worked. You know, he was a kid, and they bullied him from liking Martha, and, you know, he shaved his face, and he cut himself. I know it's painful, but, hey, a lot of people have a tragic backstory. 
And I like the songs. I think the songs You're a Mean One with the Mr. Grinch with Jim Carrey is a lot of fun. The 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 Who song at the end, Fa Who Tourist, love that song. The narration in the beginning with uh, Anthony Hopkins is stellar. Fuck Transformers 5. That movie can kiss my ass for using Anthony Hopkins' wonderful vo theatrical voice for such a horrible trailer. Here he works as a narrator. He has, He's calm, he's collective, and he, he gives it his all. And you never see him on screen. And I just really enjoy this movie. It's, I think it got harshly criticized. It doesn't deserve it. It's not a piece of shit. Give me a break. This is nowhere near the disaster of... The Cat in the Hat. That movie is god-awful. That movie was not funny. That movie had Mike Myers just phoning it in, and, and he was not a character at all. At least, even the nostalgia critic said Carrie had a character. In The Cat in the Hat, uh, Mike Myers has no good writing about the back him up, and he certainly doesn't have Ron Howard's directing, you know, direction. And uh, the film is a lot of fun. Like, there's a lot of stuff, not to the original, the Hubilation song, I like that, when they're like, let there be hubilation. And then the Grinch is like, tick tock, tick tock, counting down the Christmas clock. Old, young, big, small. Yeah! I'm like, that just gets me. See, Jim Carrey is giving it his all. Even through all that makeup and prosthetic, the guy's freaking brilliant in the movie. He, I, I'm, I'm shocked that this man hasn't won an Oscar yet. He's gotten Golden Globe nominations, but... Just, I, I really enjoy this movie. It puts a smile on my face. I love the score, the atmosphere, you know, the cr giant Christmas tree at the end. It makes me feel something, you know? Even when the Grinch, yeah, it looks like he's having a heart attack when his heart is growing three sizes bigger. But it's still a lot of fun. Like, just the tears are real. Carrie's performance really elevates this from a lot of the Dr. Seuss movies, you know, that, that have come out recently. I did enjoy the Lorax. I liked Horton Hears a Who, but... This was one of the better ones, especially before that, you know, it was thanks to the cat in the hat, everything had to be animated. But this is a good movie. If you've seen the original and you want to see a longer version, pop this in. Your kids aren't going to get offended. There's a few jokes, adult jokes here and there. There's no curse words, thankfully. And uh, it's got a fun atmosphere to it. And like I said, I remember this. I don't have to look at Wikipedia to see The Grinch. I mean, come on. Everybody has seen this movie that has seen the original animated short from the 60s and a lot of people have seen this and they know what a an instant classic yes from the 2000s it was the biggest movie that year and it deserved it it's it's better than half the christmas movies we're getting now i mean office christmas party is going to be r-rated and offensive this is not like that this has fun it has a heart to it i like the characters i really like the actors for the most part especially jim carrey because i went for years i was in a slump like after Batman Forever, I didn't care about Jim Carrey for a while. But then he did this, and it was different, and it was a kid's movie. It wasn't a PG-13 comic book movie or a comedy like Liar Liar, Dumb and Dumber, where he, you know, it's basically gross-out humor, or an Ace Ventura where he's talking out of his ass, which I'm not doing, believe me. But, you know, it's something different. And he owned it. And there's a lot of, you know, parodies. They parody, um, the, the, he breaks the fourth wall looking at the thing, which I love that, because Deadpool, that's why that worked. Uh, there's a scene where they put the Chariots of Fire song. Dun, 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 dun. It's amazing. I love that music. And it's a fun movie. Like I, This movie puts a nice smile on my face, especially during the holidays. And, uh, you, know, you know, if it wasn't for Jim Carrey, I think this movie would have been forgotten. It would have flopped. It would have gotten worse reviews than it did, you know, back in the year 2000. And for 16 years later, it still holds up. Also, I forgot to mention the dog. That dog is adorable. That plays Max. I have a dog, so I know what it's like to have a dog now. There's a lot of funny scenes with him and the dog that just crack me up. And the fact that the dog is real, it's not CGI for the most part. And like I said, the Grinch has held up. I just want to show you the insert. There's Ron Howard. Great at man. He didn't, he didn't suck Hollywood's dick like J.J. Abrams. And uh, that's the Grinch right there. These are the production notes. And uh, these are the special features on the back and the scene selection. And I really enjoy this movie. I don't know why it gets so much shit from critics. They can suck it. I'm, I'm going to say this right now for 2017. I'm not watching movies because of the critics or the haters on YouTube 
or these people, Metacritic and these SJWs, no. I see movies for entertainment, and this movie is entertaining because I was entertained by it, not because critics did. Screw the critics, I enjoy this movie, and I also enjoy the 1965 60s version, and I look forward to the one that Benedict Cumberbatch is going to do next year. I'm looking forward to it, because it's long overdue to see the Grinch on the big screen again. So anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for sticking by and, and watching my videos, I know it's been a long, long year, but soon, next week, I'm doing my best and worst of the year for 2016, and it's a real doozy. And like I said before, don't expect to see Rogue One in any of my discussions for next week. I'm only reviewing Christmas holiday films, and I'm going to be doing a review of Passengers, hopefully, after I see it and after I put it in my top 10 of the year, because I know it's going to be in my top 10. But I am not reviewing Rogue One. Don't ask me. I refuse to see that movie. I'm also not seeing, you know... Collateral Beauty or Sing or freaking uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, I'll wait till next year. Some movies I could wait till next year because next year is chock full of months that I can see movies. But the ones that I did see will be reviewed, will be talked about again. Hintity hint hint. And, uh, you know, I'm going to let's see, we'll see where it goes in the new year. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I don't want to bum you out for Christmas because it's, it's 12 days away. See you in the next one. Bye.